my presentation on the Quran by Johan de Um I started off, ooh, that's really touchy. Um, I started off the slideshow by just talking about the composer. Um, he's not all that well known. I know he's done, um, another piece they might be familiar with is uh, The Lord of the Rings Gandalf. And then this piece is the only other one I was really familiar with. Um, he studied trombone and conducting the Royal Conservatory of Music. Um, he's foreign, he's not American. Uh, I then went on to talk about the performance aspects of Aquarium, kind of talked through with the students about, you know, kind of the history behind him, like which opus number this was for him, uh, how long the piece is going to take for us to play, what kind of difficulty it contains, you know, what's difficult about the piece, what's easy about the piece, and um, it's a three movement work, which is, uh, in this case, Aquarium is more geared towards probably uh, a high school group. And doing a multi-movement work in high school, I think, is really beneficial. I don't think I personally, in my high school, band, ever did a multi-movement work. So I think this is a really good piece to do with your students uh, when doing a multi-movement work to introduce to them. Um, I went on to then talk about kind of the musical, the basic musical aspects behind the piece. Uh, talking about movements one and three are kind of a rondo-like. You get your repeated themes uh, throughout uh, both of those movements. Time signatures throughout, uh, what kind of meters you have. So just kind of a basic, rough, musical background of the, of the piece. Okay. Um, each movement actually depicts a fish, a freshwater fish. It's based off all freshwater fish. And after this slide, I didn't go on to talk about the fish. I meant to switch my slides around, but I didn't. And uh, basically, I just went on to say that each movement would you fix a fish. So now I went and I went through and scanned um, both of the movements. The, these are the, this is the main theme in movement one and this is the main theme in movement two. And we would listen to it. I couldn't find a decent uh, recording on iTunes and I think there was only like two recordings on YouTube that weren't good. So I would use the JW Pepper recording, which isn't exactly ideal because you don't have the sound clip up, but uh, we would listen to the piece you would go through and I would have students identify, understand this theme and we would go through and identify what voices the theme is played in, what kind of variations there are, you know, sometimes there's grace notes thrown in with the theme. Uh, same thing with movement three, you get that theme throughout the whole time, throughout all the different uh, families of instruments, and again you get uh, grace notes uh, thrown in, so there's variations on each of those. Um, and movement, the basis of movement two was a very, you would get, this is basically the whole, uh, a lot of the movement is just half notes moving and moving. And I think that's a really good way to foundate your sound and have students understand that you get, where you get your blending and balance from. We always talk about where do we get the foundation of our sound? We get it from the bass voices. Why do we get it from the bass voices? So uh, whenever the bass voices are doing just that, that chord changing, you get the students to really understand how their chord is functioning and what they need to listen for and tune into with their ears in order to do that. And I, this is just a really great way to, to tackle this early on and give the students a really uh, fundament, fundamental understanding of what we need to listen for. Um, okay. <coughs> Basically, the way that DeMay uh, transitions in between the movements is really, uh, is really different. The way movement one ends and the way it transitions into movement two is uh, really interesting because, well, hold on. basically I'll have the students answer the questions and then we'll go on to the next slide which has the answers written down for us. Movement one ends abruptly and it sounds like it's the end of the piece and it transitions into movement two, you know, it's a slower setting, it's kind of just kind of grog, groggy and dragging. But then the way he goes in from movement two to movement three is he... Uh, takes the tempo at the end of movement two and goes into a six eight movement three and directly slides into it. So the way that DeMay uh, transitions in between this like multi this multi movement work is really interesting because he takes a different approach between movement one and two and then uh, between and then the different approach between movement two and three just uh, is a very different way he goes about doing that. Uh, and then this was supposed to go after my uh, movement slide about the fish. Basically, like I said, it's based off freshwater fish. Uh, the first movement uh, depicts, I think, those fish. I don't know. 
but <laughs> it was supposed to go after that and it didn't. So that was my fault. So, what's up? <laughs>